This video has been brought to you by Wallop Technologies. Arcade Heroes. Greetings, it's Adam with ArcadeHeroes.com, and it's been a little bit of a slow summer for Arcade News. I mean, granted, there have been a couple of things here and there, but generally speaking, there's not a ton of stuff, like new stuff going on during the summertime for the amusement business. Uh, we don't do the E3 thing, where that's where all of our announcements come. Our, the announcements in this business happen in, or for the most part, happen in November or spring, and so... Yeah, it's just, that's how it is. Um, but sometimes try and keep things going with interest articles, like the one that we posted recently uh, from Kevin Williams about uh, some arcade stuff back in the past. But um, we do have some updates to discuss today. And so for those that don't want to read through the blog, that's what this video is for, as I've often done. But uh, we've got some updates on the newest version of Golden Tee, Golden Tee PGA Tour 2023 through 2024, uh, a new version of the Jurassic Park Pinball Machine by Stern, a new one from Eunice called Raccoon Rampage, uh, a DDR3 A3 update, and uh, something about a new shuffleboard game. So let's get into that. Now with Golden Tee PGA Tour 2023-2024, a little bit of a mouthful, It's uh, this is something that I missed, unfortunately, so my apologies to Incredible Technologies uh, and as well as Golden Tee fans on that. I'm usually on top of these announcements, but for some weird reason I just didn't realize that it was a brand new major content update until today. Now, it's been like this for many, many years, I think since Golden Tee 2007, where Incredible Technologies has done an annual update for the machine. And it's been rare that they've changed out the hardware, uh, but they did that with PGA Tour, which came out, I think, kind of, I think it was last year, might have been 2021, it was a little hazy on that one, but they've just released the newest content update for that, and so that's what we're going to get into but uh, with this trailer um, but I did make a mistake on when I initially posted this posting just a teaser so we'll watch the full trailer now and uh, then get into some of the other trailers that are here for the other games now I'm keeping these all so muted so that I don't get dinged with any sort of copyright thing sometimes trailers will use licensed music and it's, it's all weird and stupid uh, the way that the algorithm detects it and so we'll keep it on silent but if you want to watch these with the sound um, which of course is better then you can go ahead and find them uh, I'll, I'll put uh, links in the description as well or you could just go to this web page uh, or this post on Arcade Heroes but anyways there are new courses for Golden Tee as I read from the press release the linked one uh, there are going to be 110 new courses now but this new one also has a create a course feature which I'm sure the trailer will get into I actually haven't watched this trailer yet and so it has a lot of flying balls <laughs> in it uh, but it's been a little while since I played Golden Tee. Oh, we got some remastered classics. I mean, there's such a long history of courses in Golden Tee. I mean, going back before 2007, all the way back to 1990, where they, they just have a ton to pull from. And so if you're really into Golden Tee, then these remastered ones are probably going to be nice to see them in 3D. And, of course, PGA Tour courses, which is part of it being... On Golden Tee PGA Tour. <laughs> That's supposed to be a big part of the appeal. And so let's just keep watching for the next one. Brand new game mode, which is, I think, the Target Rush. Yeah, so this is like a 60 second game mode where you're trying to hit the balls into to get to the target. I guess almost like, uh, or maybe like Lawn Darts, but with a golf club. <laughs> I'm almost surprised that kind of mode hasn't existed before. Um, but. Looks like fun, and especially if you get a hole-in-one like that, so that would be great. And this does have an app. That's one thing Golden Tee has always been good at, is being on the cutting edge of different features. Uh, they were one of the first online arcade games, and there was the Create a Course stuff, a new club pass. I saw something about new golf clubs have been introduced for the first time in a long time. 
Oh yeah, more than 25 golf clubs. And more events. Some fresh content all year long. So yeah, that's if, if you're into Golden Tea, then you're going to want to find a location that will have this. And I'm pretty sure most, if not all, locations that have a Golden Tea PGA Tour are going to have this update. I don't know how much it would cost. I'm sure you can contact Incredible Technologies or your uh, local distributor. Um, there is, there's some weird stuff with distribution on uh, golden tea particularly if you're operating a bar i think you have to go direct through incredible technologies or use a certain kind of operator um, it, again it's it's a little strange and gets a little complex but um, that, that's more for operators for the game players all you have to care about is is this game at my place where i go and play golden tea and so that's coming along or that's actually already out sorry that came out on july 31st and but there will be new things just thrown out there throughout the year and so it used to be that they just did one annual update with any new modes and content and stuff but for the past little while now i think since 2019 they had been offering like new courses occasionally throughout the year and so it's just i guess this july 31st release launched the new modes and several courses all at once instead of trickling it out but th that is out now Next up, we have Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary Edition by Stern Pinball. Now, uh, Jurassic Park Pinball came out in 2019, I think it was. I have a pro version of the game sitting right over here. Uh, and it's done all right, but like I've complained about in a lot of... Uh, different videos uh, regarding pinball is it just seems like no matter what the theme is that I pick it does well for the first year or so and then it just goes down to a certain low level and just kind of hangs out there uh, for a long time and or never recovers and like this year for the first half of the year my Adams family pinball which is 30 31 years old was beating out my brand new jurassic park uh, or newish jurassic park and mandalorian pinball machines it was actually my number one pinball machine and it's frustrating when you have a new game that costs uh, you know as maybe as much as an adams family does but it's new and it still has a big name attached to it but the old one is beating the crap out of the uh, newer ones and then as an operator I'm just kind of like why should I keep spending money on new ones when the old ones the old classics are going to do just as well if not better other than you know maybe sometimes those classics might cost more than an LE <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a stern pinball machine but uh, or even a Jersey Jack or anyone else so anyways um, yeah, they've decided to do or celebrate 30 years since the 93 Steven Spielberg movie came out uh, with this new LE version. And as I mentioned in the blog post, not every collector is happy with this because there already was an LE that was limited to 500 units. And so this is a second LE that's limited to 500 units. And I guess they feel that this is going to harm the value of their LEs, which it might. Um, but one other thing that's also not clear and, and one complaint that I had and I know many others had enough that some fans made their own software code for the game is that there was very little in the machine that, or in the game code, that came from the original movie. It focuses mainly on the side character of Dennis Nedry, uh, the guy that's best known as uh, Newman from Seinfeld. But, uh, and in that sense, it's so he's so heavy on the quotes there that it's just like. Nedry pinball not really Jurassic Park pinball <laughs> but it's like why is this so focused on a side character who gets killed like halfway through the movie well, obviously the answer is money licensing if they had licensed Jeff Goldblum and um, or, uh, Laura Dern and I can't remember the name of the main actor the protagonist there uh, Sam I think or maybe I'm thinking of his character name from uh, <laughs> the movie uh, sorry but I uh, even then they didn't get like 
other voice actors in to portray those characters either, which is strange to me. Like, they did so with the Samuel Jackson character, who is also just a minor side character. Jurassic Park Pinball kind of feels like that, <laughs> because it's focused all on these minor characters who you might have otherwise forgot were even in the movie, uh, instead of the main protagonists. And so, like, uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, there was the John Hammond, uh, they got a actor to voice him as well but it's just like why didn't they have these other characters like the paleontologists and uh, the Jeff Goldblum character was uh, you know pretty well remembered and very memeable um, again I wouldn't expect them to get Jeff Goldblum himself just because that would make the pinball machine probably cost more like the Beatles or something where you know twenty forty thousand dollars but and that's just not tenable but again why not have some cheaper voice actors or some of the same voice actors that you had uh, do some of these other side characters uh, do that um, but there was a fan made um code update an unauthorized one that added clips a lot of movie clips uh, from the original and integrated it into there it's just if you have insider connected it will make sure that you don't have that unauthorized code and there's also stuff in the stern eula terms and so i'm, I'm not um, taking sides on that i'm just mentioning you know a lot of people have not likes that this game did not come with those certain things in it. Now, will the 30th anniversary edition of the game do that? Again, that, as we saw from this trailer here, there's no indication on that. And um, even Stern's website, well, let's take a look here. If we pop on over there and we click on 30th anniversary edition. So, please do announce a special edition featuring brand new exterior art package, full color mirror back glass, illusion copper powder coated pinball armor, custom designer autograph bottom arc, inside art blades, upgraded audio system, anti reflection pinball, play field glass, shaker motor, sequentially numbered plaque, and a certificate of authenticity. So, even there, it makes no mention as to whether or not it's actually going to have anything from the 30th anniversary. Now, does the game absolutely have to have it? I mean, it's obviously worked without that. It's just, in my opinion as a gamer, I think it would do better with that. Now, I guess one devil's advocate point that could be made is the Jurassic Park arcade machine. It's still like my number one, my number two game. And it has almost nothing from the movies in there other than the logo. Um, but otherwise, if it didn't have Jurassic Park slapped on it, it, you know, it would just be any other dinosaur shooter. And that still is doing incredibly well uh, eight years after it was released. Now, I think the dynamics of that are different between a video game, which is a lot easier to approach and play and understand, than a pinball machine, which oftentimes, especially for noobs, is a little more complex to um, approach. Um, but, I mean, I would still take the stance that if Rothreels released a software update for Jurassic Park that did add some stuff from the original movies or you know or even Jurassic World like the Indominosaurus Rex or whatever that thing was called um, that would be cool and I think it would give it a little boost uh, help give it in an extra boost uh, you know, refresh it even further and earn even better and so would I pay for an update uh, like that to Jurassic Park as long as it didn't cost the same <laughs> as a dedicated model or just slightly cheaper I, I do hate it when software updates are uh, ridiculously expensive like the old uh, Star Wars Battle Pod which got a one level update and that update was five thousand dollars and so I wasn't too happy about that it's like yeah I mean compared to the price of the machine it was cheap but it was just like well is adding this level going to be worth five thousand dollars at least at the time I didn't feel so and so I actually did not grab that but uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think that uh, this is going to be worth it? Are you excited about it? The suggested price is $13,000 plus freight tax. And again, they are limited to 500 units. So um, uh, from pin side, it seemed like collectors were mixed more on the negative side than the positive side. But there were a few people there popping up saying, yeah, I'm excited. Um, another thing that I brought up here that I needed to focus a little bit more on is that Venom, which is in production now and units should start shipping out any time now. Uh, I 
didn't realize this at first because I think Stern posted about it afterwards, but uh, they're trying out some new ideas with the Insider Connected update, and one of those is a um, the ability to save your progress, and so uh, and and that's mentioned here on this GameSpot article. Um, yeah, uh, game progress saving and unlockable characters tracks your high scores, help you locate stern machines. I mean, some of that was already integrated in Insider Connected, but this idea of saving your progress in the game, like with what you've been able to do already, um, and make it so that you can access those more advanced modes, that is a really cool idea. I really like that. And so... Uh, Kudos to Stern for that. I know I've been a little critical on other things like I just was on the Jurassic Park, um, but I'm totally on board for this idea of what they're doing with Insider Connected. And so my only complaint there is that, unfortunately, I've not seen a lot of people use it. I have seen some, um, but most for the most part, it's just been those really dedicated pinball fans that come in on tournaments, which happen once a month, maybe once every few months. Um, but for the most part, there's a lot of pinball fans that come in that well when they come in it's rare and not even all of them use the insider connected and so maybe I need to do more to help promote that so that they know what advantages it has but something like this like if I had a venom pinball machine I'd be touting that and I hope they add that feature to the other insider connected games because it's just really cool the the idea of being able to save your progress in a pinball machine so uh, again uh, hats off to Stern for um, innovating in that regard. Next up is Raccoon Rampage. And so if that sounds a little familiar, well, you might remember a little game, an indie-made game called Retro Raccoons, which this is tied back to Incredible Technologies. It wasn't developed by Incredible Technologies, but they did pick it up. And so I've covered this one a few times on the blog. I know the... Uh, programmer to that his name's also Adam <laughs> and so he's a, a cool guy um, but uh, one has to wonder if that was an influence on this new uh, Raccoon Rampage uh, game by Eunice it's just the trailer doesn't really doesn't show any gameplay there like you do get to see a little bit so it seems to have the same kind of gameplay as Eunice's other zombie shooter games these cutesy zombie games don't know if these are raccoon zombies it's hard to tell uh, from that and most of the time when you see the game screen it's on a continue uh, one it's a water gun game another one uh, it's like eh, how many of these do we have in the industry these days i don't know i've lost count <laughs> but they all have this thing where there's grass or fake grass in the middle of the play field there i do like the 3d molded marquee that's cool um the water thing, it's a nice novelty, but it's hard to say how much people are into that now. I mean, the only game I've heard of that's done exceptionally well was the original one, Iceman. Um, of course, the gameplay on that sucked, but uh, it's just black after that. It's weird. And... <sighs> So the, the very short time we see the gameplay here, it looks smoothish. Uh, so that's good. I mean, uh, as long as they're at 60 frames a second, then can't complain too much. But again, I can't tell if these are even 3D or 2D. Uh, I guess they're 3D. Uh, but I also can't tell if they're uh, zombie coons or uh, just trash rats <laughs> not sure but um, yeah this one's not on Eunice's website yet so uh, perhaps it will be showing up soon just Eunice kind of posts things to their website whenever they feel like it and it's never announced so I'm not sure I'll have to keep my eyes on that but I would guess that this will be at IAPA uh, sometime soon but yeah there's another water shooting game now for something that uh, did turn some heads earlier this week, uh, well, back on Monday, it was the official release of Andamiro's Pump It Up 2023 Phoenix, and it seems like somebody at Konami was paying attention to that, so they're like, hey, we have some DDR machines out there at like Round 1 USA and Dave and & Buster's, so let's update them, but apparently, uh, from the chat on the Arcade Heroes Discord, is that this is not coming to Dave & Buster's, 
don't know why that is. It's just going to round one USAs. And a lot of locations did get their sticks, but apparently they've been bricking machines. And last report is that 14 different machines have been bricked. And so Konami's still in the process of trying to figure out what's wrong and what's happening. So unfortunately, the uh, yeah, that's that's the situation as it is right now. But there's this meme that's been made already. It's definitely not a zip bomb, which means you know, <laughs> like a zip drive sort of thing that uh, just blows up your machine. And so hopefully they get that fixed very soon. But again, I uh, don't know why uh, Dave and Buster's won't be getting that. Maybe it's round one just paying for exclusivity that happens and speaking of exclusives uh, on Dave and Buster's side while they may not be getting the latest version of a3 for any DDRs that are out there they're getting supercharged shuffle a new uh, shuffleboard game and this is not the first time that I've seen an elevated version of shuffleboard although um, the only other one that I've seen out there is called um, uh, Disclo Shuffle. Let's find that really quick. So from way back in January 3rd, 2014, uh, a company called Arachnid, which generally just deals with stuff like um, dartboards, uh, released this new virtual shuffleboard hybrid and uh, so it had a game screen on it it was a sm much smaller play field as i recall the shuffle pucks had these little balls in them almost like the old school mice uh, that you would use on computers back in the 80s and 90s <laughs> um, so that you wouldn't have to a location wouldn't have to worry about waxing the play field and keeping the dust on it and all that stuff uh, so it could just roll better but as i recall the sensors worked out pretty well it had a nice uh, look on it uh, on location and it had different games built into it making it a little bit more versatile than your standard shuffleboard thing and so that's the game that came to mind when I saw uh, this oops don't want to get too big there this new supercharged shuffle and so from I came across this on LinkedIn I haven't heard it talked about anywhere else but and it has automated tracking multiple game variants instant replays uh, profile creation and real-time lighting and audio for those immersive vibes and so this is what they look like they're fuller sized shuffleboard ones it's hard to tell it could just be the perspective here this one might be longer than this one I mean if you're not familiar with shuffleboard they're generally sold in various sizes uh, by the foot and are multiples of uh, of even numbers and so I, as I used to sell uh, game equipment I, I used to uh, sell shuffleboard on occasion and it almost never was to a commercial location it was almost always to home users um, but the smallest ones that I recall there being were like nine footers and ten footers uh, and then the largest ones were 22 or 24 foot uh, a lot of the ones that were popular were kind of in the middle there like 12 to 16 footers it, again it's been a long time um, but so this will probably be available on different sizes and I would almost be I almost expect the uh, sensors to maybe be placed inside of this light bar on top as well and you have LEDs around the sides and so uh, yeah just a way to upgrade your shuffleboard but I don't know if this is a Dave and Buster's exclusive at the moment it sounds like there's only one at an undisclosed Texas location and of course Dave and Buster's I think has more locations in Texas than anywhere else <laughs> um, but and perhaps it'll roll out to more Dave and Buster's or perhaps it'll roll out to the industry at large we'll know at IAPA I assume uh, which way that's blowing and then last but not least this one's not a new new one but this morning Sega released this trailer to promote their drone racing Genesis game which as I recall came out in February of this year and I have footage of this one on my channel from the last IAPA and uh, don't know if any of you have come across it out there perhaps you have but uh, got some direct footage I also at the IAPA I grabbed a uh, drone uh, camera that I have sitting back here and I filmed <laughs> a couple of Sega employees um, playing it uh, using a drone and so that was fun to do but uh, yeah have you played this one um, have the controls improve as I remember it's uh, the early version I played of it it took a bit of getting used to on the joystick 
but uh, I haven't played it in months, so I don't know if there's newer software that's calibrated that a little better or anything. But, uh, yeah, they're just promoting this again. Sometimes Sega will do that. I, in fact, saw some uh, <laughs> um, confusion. There's a site called Vending Times uh, where they, they focus a lot on vending machines and stuff, but uh, they'll occasionally cover the other aspects of the coin-op amusement industry, including arcades. And Sega was promoting their Mission Impossible arcade game because of the new Mission Impossible movie that came out um, some weeks ago or a month ago now. And um, Vending Times misunderstood that uh, they were saying, Sega's announced a new Mission Impossible game. And it's like, actually, this has been out since like 2020. <laughs> uh, so, whoops. But, yeah. So, have you played this? What do you think about it? Like it, hate it, or middle of the road it, whatever. I love One of the things I love the most about this on the cabinet are, like, the LED effects. They're really, really nice. But, uh, yeah. That's the latest in the business. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about some rumors of things that are coming up uh, that I've heard about, including some possible another port of a game an arcade game to uh the uh, from arcade to a uh, home system um you want to be an arcade heroes member so we've got to give them perks for the patronage that they provide and so i've got a couple of posts if you are a member already be sure to check your youtube uh, posts as you should see something there from me that gets into a little bit more there but yeah what do you think about all these games anything that you're interested in playing or finding out there let me know in the comments below and we'll see you on the next video or piece of news which might be hopefully uh, the installation of a new LCD Unico LCD monitor into an old Neo Geo MVS. I, I would have had that done by now, but as I was halfway through it, I realized I don't have any mounting brackets uh, or any way to really mount this into the cabinets, and so I've had to go to a hardware store and get that and still working on that. But that'll come soon, as well as some footage of Donut Dodo Do from the XR Arcadia. But uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.